Would you believe me if I told you that this is being filmed on an around $300 camera? Shocking. I know, but after today's video, you'll be able to do the same. That's right, I'm going to give you the secret formula to creating your average camera, you know, the one that you keep in your drawer and maybe pull out on the odd holiday. Holidays, do you remember those? Into a pro camera, from amateur to pro. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to another video. It's great to have you here. How about we make sure we have you here again by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'll wait. Done? Okay, let's get into today's video. The quality of your videos is important, very important. But this doesn't necessarily have to come with a big price tag. We all know the importance of creating content for your business and brand. I mean, we practically go on about it every week on this YouTube channel. Just saying. But maybe you don't have the budget or know-how to start working with high-spec cameras. There is no need to panic. Ah, everyone's panicking. Myself and our team of experts have you covered. With these five simple steps, we will have your $300 to $400 average camera from amateur to pro. Shall we? Number one, getting the scene right. Setting the scene is one small change you can make that can have a big impact on how professional your video looks. Take this for instance. Me standing in front of this bland wall, for instance, isn't very inspiring. But if I move here, instantly I've created a more interesting composition and just like that, this video looks 10 times more professional. When you're looking for your location, you should consider lighting and composition. Yes, you can add lights in, which we will go into more detail later, but you want to make sure there's good natural light to start off with and then add in the light. With composition, ask yourself, can you add in leading lines? Can you do something to make it look a little bit more interesting? Like, I don't know, add in a tree. And remember, always have the subject ahead of the background, never flat against a wall. Number two, light them up. So we've chosen a spot, it has a nice interesting background, maybe you have some leading lines, but now we need to consider some lighting. As you've probably noticed, we have switched off the light boxes and this scene looks very different to the start of the video. We wanted to show you how this would look with some natural light and the office lights and it does not look great. So we're gonna switch on these soft boxes instead. Let there be light. There are various ways and methods to setting up lighting, but that's something that you can lose yourself in an hour long rabbit hole of YouTube later. For now, follow these simple rules. When using natural light, if it is a really bright sunny day, avoid being in direct sunlight. You wanna avoid that kind of harsh light. A cloudy day is ideal, but you can replicate this by having a white sheet against windows, and this acts as a diffuser to kind of get rid of some of that harsh light. When using a ring light, have it directly in front of you. The hole in it means that you still get some nice shadows, but really these are ideal for things like makeup tutorials because they're very bright lights. When using a soft box like we are, have it off to the side, but kind of angled down slightly. This is more natural and looks a lot nicer on people's faces as it creates a nice shadow. And Vittorio added into my script that this is called Rembrandt lighting. Number three, get the camera set up right. As the phrase goes, it's lights, camera, then action. So Vittorio, cinematographer here at Videos, is gonna run you through all the settings you need to tweak on this camera to make it look as professional and stunning as possible. We haven't done anything yet. This is literally, as you're watching, basic settings, default settings of the camera, and it doesn't look too great. So he is gonna, ooh, and there is the pie guy. So he's gonna switch that up for you now. Okay, hello, hi, I'm Vittorio, your cinematographer here. So here today with us, we have the Panasonic GH4. They're using, so it's quite affordable camera within the price range, $300, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna do at the moment, as you see, we're recording this frame here. So at the moment, because we're in the UK, standard frame rate is 25 frames per second here in the UK, and then to you guys, in 
and in America, in the US, it's 24 frames per second. So I'd say stick to 24. At the moment, you can stick between 800 ISO or you can push it to 900, but try to keep it indoor 800. Just for the sake of this video, we will kill some of the ISO and we'll see what that looks like. So actually, we'll expose it, we'll go full blown out. Another thing point to note as well is when you're shooting, you always want to shoot at manual manual mode. So manual mode gives you more dynamic to control your light and your settings. Whereas if you were to shoot on auto mode, it comes with a, a limit where you can't do much with auto. So take for example, if you want to tweak something like, oh, my slightly on it exposed with auto, you can't do anything with that because the settings are all locked and the camera's basically saying, this is the best I did for you. So right now we're completely overexposed and the settings not let me do anything. Even when I'm scrolling, there's nothing happening because to the camera, it's just programmed as this is the best setting for indoors. So yeah, even though we're slightly overexposed, the camera is saying, I think that's fine. So yeah, shoot in manual. <laughs> so at the moment, our ISO, which has been switched, is 64,000. So as you can see, we've gone all the way because it's overexposed. Your standard Hollywood or your Hollywood standard way of doing it is by basically setting your ISO as low as possible. So to set your ISO, double click the display button and it take you to this section. And all you do, you click that and then you drag it. So you reduce, as you can see, we're knocking it down. So I would say if you're indoor, keep it between, like I said, 800 and I would say 1,600. Don't just rely on the in-camera setting and light to light up your scene for you. It's always good to get extra light. So this won't cost you much. So there'll probably be be the range between 30 to like $50 per light to get. So if I real quick show you what it looks like without lights and then with lights, it will make sense. And I think that is everything you need to know. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. And over to you, Maya. Number four, it's all about the sound, baby. Sound is arguably more important than the visuals of your video. We're more likely to forgive bad shaky phone footage than bad audio, right? So we have Tom, our video editor and resident sound guy to run us through the key things you need to keep in mind when recording audio. First of all, I would say a microphone's one thing you do need to, uh, you you need to purchase, as, as Maya said before. You can sort of forgive video that doesn't look the best, but uh, if audio sounds shit, people are a bit less forgiving of that. You know, if, if, if someone can't hear uh, very well what you're actually saying, then, you know, that's no good. So a lot of microphones we tend to use, we use lapel microphones, so I've got one. Good thing is with lapels, is you, you get um, a constant sort of level because it's sort of attached to the person. So, you know, if, if you have a shotgun mic, if I move further away, you have to sort of start messing about with uh, leveling and stuff like that then. Lapel mics, they're, they're very easy to use. And I do believe you can just get ones online, which is just literally sort of, you know, a microphone on a wire that can plug straight into your phone. And you can get, you know, certain apps and stuff like that to record your audio that way. We do use packs, which we connect through the Sennheiser XLR inputs. So these, you don't have to sort of mess about with all this fancy equipment, but the easiest uh, sort of way to do it is just, you know, have a look online. Maya's just informed me actually that uh, we do have a, a video on this, so uh, you can find the link for that in the uh, description box below. Things to keep in mind uh, when recording audio is uh, first of all the placement of the microphone so on the subject of lapel mics uh, one thing that can be a nuisance is uh, any jewelry so if you've got your your lapel on here and you've got clanging necklaces and that can obviously cause a bit of um, well noise other things is stuff like depending if you're using you know, maybe radio packs, uh, uh, you know, quite fancier stuff. Sometimes you can get interference with your, your microphone. So, you know, if it's, if it's too close to uh, a mobile phone or, or a laptop, you can start hearing some uh, 
weird stuff. A good place to sort of put your microphone is, is sort of just around the chest. I've got mine sort of just clipped onto the top of my shirt, uh, coming out slightly. If it's clipped inside, obviously it's gonna sort of sound uh, muffled then, since it's underneath cloth or t-shirt or whatever. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you can get away with it slightly underneath. Rule of thumb, a uh, good placement for it is, is just around the neck area, sort of half coming out sort of thing. One thing to, uh, to keep in mind is if you're using uh, a recorder or you're not doing it through your phone, uh, you need to keep an eye on your levels. An ideal sort of level for dialogue, uh, spoken word is, is usually from about minus 12 decibels to minus six, no higher than sort of minus six or, you know, if someone laughs or shouts and y your levels go up, you don't really want it going much higher than minus six. So your editing software doesn't have to be so expensive. If you watched our How To Choose Video Editing Software video, you will have seen that DaVinci Resolve came up on top and they do actually have a free version. If you want the ins and outs to other video editing software, then go and check it out. As always, link in description down below. Once you have your software, here are some key principles to keep in mind. The first one is music, and music is a massive factor in dictating atmosphere and mood in your video. It also makes it less of a boring video and much more engaging. We do again have another video that we've done, link down in below in the the description go check that out as well next you want to be making sure that you're chopping out everything that doesn't add value to your video this means ums ahs so's erms little spaces in between when you're talking get all that cut out and make it as choppy as it can be so that you're getting your point across much quicker. My third tip would be time management, and that means saving all the fancy edits or the cool effects till last, and just making sure that you've got a rough edit in place and you've got a flow of the narrative and story first. Then you can go back in later and add in the cool stuff later. You also want to avoid adding in PowerPoint presentations or animations into your videos. They're just too cliche. They're not very professional, they just look cheap and tacky, and they don't add a lot, whole lot to your videos. If you do want custom animations, then check out the video's platform. We do have a whole spiel on this. I'm not gonna go into it in so much detail. Here it is. Yep, that's right. With videos, you can create custom animations in minutes and with no experience necessary, all of which add a professional touch to your videos. You can find the link in the description box below, so check us out. But for now, that is your five simple steps to getting your three to $400 camera from basic to pro. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did. That helps us and lets us know that you did enjoy it. And how about leaving a comment down below? We would love to say hi. But for now, from me and the team, ciao.